Well, what we're here really to talk about today is to, to get into some of the beginning and the basics of getting your business started. And we're going to get started just talking a little bit about your list, your names list, as well as rolling into the invitation. And pretty much, you know, all that you bring into this business when you get started is your list. I mean, that is your only asset. That is the biggest asset that you have. And uh, really, it's the beginning point of, of getting your business started. So I'm going to hand over to, and he's going to start to talk a little bit about how to get your list started and uh, how to get your list going. Okay, well, I think it, it, it stands to reason that uh, you, when you first get exposed to this business, that you usually get exposed to the business by somebody who kind of knows what they're doing with the business. And uh, your goal as a new person, I think, would be to keep that person's attention for as long as possible. So from my experience, the best way to keep that person's attention is to put the best possible people that you know in front of that person as soon as possible. So when we start to develop the list of people that you know, we always like to start with a list of 100 names because if you just look at the, the numbers of names you have on your cell phone, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever come across anybody who has less than 100 names in their cell phone. So what we want to do is we want to write down all those names as quickly as possible. And a great way to get your list started is, is I have a little test that I like to do with people as I say to them that you know, the record is 70 names in three minutes. Uh, if you beat that record, I'll give you a free ticket to the business building seminar. Why, why that's a good way to get people started with their list is because it stops people prejudging. And one of the biggest lessons that we learn in the business is that more often than not, if you speak to anyone who's built a business to a significant level, they'll tell you that the people that they thought would build a business big didn't and the people that they thought wouldn't did. So we're more, we, we know that you know, we, we've been more wrong than right. So a really good thing to start with is to start by saying, you know what, if you invested a million, two million, three million of your own money, and you could pick 10 people that you personally know to get into business with, who would those 10 people be? And start with that 10, and then let's get as many names down as we can. Another great exercise that we find is uh, in the starting point uh, a package that you get in getting your business started, it's a fabulous tool. There's a list building exercise in there, and it basically runs and it starts off, who are your, and then there's a whole lot of little blocks, relatives, family members, you know, who's your cousin, and then it runs into who do you know who is an architect, a professional, or this or that, or whatever, and there's a huge list building exercise there, and it's really great to run through that, because what we find happens is even outside of your cell phone, and everybody whose name you might have on there, you very fast start to realize that there's a whole lot of people outside of that who may not even be on your phone, but you go, you know what, I remember that guy who was an architect. Gee, why don't I put him on my list? You know, all I remember his name was, was uh, I'll find his number later, but, but write his name down anyway. And I don't know if you don't mind me saying, just asking you as an example, if you don't mind giving some of the variances of some of the people in your business that have, been, you have built successful teams and some of their backgrounds, uh, because quite often it's, it's interesting when you think of the different backgrounds of people who've succeeded at this and uh, just kind of uh, where, where they came from. Absolutely. I think uh, one of the biggest things I've learned in this business is that I think from nearly every background I've ever experienced or heard of before, there's people who've built the business to the diamond level. Um, if I just have a look at some of the people that have built the business big in this business, I've got you know, senior directors of co uh, public companies who uh, you know, deal with millions and billions and billions. There's accountants, there's stockbrokers, there's um, you know, people who own their own small business, training businesses. There's people who, are, who haven't got any formal education at all and have built big businesses. They've just uh, you know, left school and got some odd jobs here and there. Um, always wanted to find their, their niche in life, but never really found their niche in life. And were just looking for something that came across their path, and this was it. Um, you know, doctors by the truckload, engineers by the truckload, school teachers by the truckload. Um, I think those are some of the, the most predominant professions in the business. And those are not necessarily people that you think would be typically. I mean, most people who look at this business for the first time, they think, who do I know who needs a bit of extra cash? And from my experience, it's not really for the needy. It's more for the greedy. Not greedy in terms of they want lots of money, but greedy they want quality of life. Uh, most people who have became professionals are usually dissatisfied with the life they lead as professionals because they don't like the results they get, either from a money point of view or a time point of view. The other thing that I find really interesting 
is that it takes the same amount of time to show the business to a poor prospect or somebody who's not very ambitious or is not really driven to get more out of life as what it does to show to a really ambitious, driven person. It's so something that I've already got quite, some uh, form of success at something. Now, maybe their success is only at sport, as, as my simple you know, background is as a professional sports person. Maybe the success is as a professional. But somebody who's had some kind of success at life typically has some kind of uh, what would the word be, credibility, that people that they would speak to would listen to them and take them seriously. So definitely adding people onto your list that have got credibility would, would definitely help. Do you want to maybe talk for a second just a bit about the segmented list and what you find with that? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, you know one of the things that we've learned about this pipeline system is that it's always good to get people in the same team who know each other. So once you've, you've done the, the Project 100, if you like, for lack of a better explanation, um, what a really good exercise to do is to take that, those names that you've written down and now segment it. Now, what do we mean by that? I mean, there's various different groups of people who will know each other. There's obviously family. There's your close circle of friends. There's the people that you work with. There's, um, you know, people you might know through sport or through church or through your synagogue or through your temple or through wherever you worship. There's people that you know through uh, clubs that you may belong to. And the good idea is to keep them in lists. And one of the great and most important things that you want to do is when you've segmented the list, is to list in maybe priority order of maybe the top three people who were the most influential in that list. So, you know, from your colleagues at work, you know, who are the three most influential people um, at work? Who are the three most influential friends that you have? Who are the three most influential family members? Now, why that is important is because we know if we can get them in early, working with them and you on that list, with that influence that they have and in, com in, co in conjunction with the person who's making the list, it's a very formidable team that people you know, find difficult to resist. I also find it's quite interesting is as you start to introduce a couple of people into your team, you start to realize how many people mutually know people. You know, you might introduce your friend Mary, and then you very fast think between you and Mary how many people you mutually know. And in the interim, you and Mary introduce Joanne to the business, and it's quite interesting. You and Joanne know a set of people, and Mary and Joanne know a set of people. And again, you know, how a team can start to develop and how, you know, pipelines can start to grow, just really running off mutual people that, that people mutually know, certainly that starts to. To, to add a lot and, and, and grow a lot? Again, you know, the thing with the list is um, I think you, it's a, it's a, you've got to keep in mind this is a work in progress. This is not something that you've written your beautiful list out and now you fold up very neatly and you file it in the deepest part of your safe. It is a work in progress. The reason why we're putting people on the list is we want to take people off the list. Now, one of the things that a lot of people make as a mistake in the beginning is they don't put down people that they feel that, they, that intimidate them that they feel that they would consider above their peer, like their bosses. Now, what I find is a great exercise is that the, the, the whole list-generating process is to put down everybody you know. And when you feel comfortable and confident with the business, and when you feel like you've had a, enough success that you feel comfortable to then speak to the boss, I mean, a great time to speak to the boss is when you're making more money than the boss, isn't it? <laughs> so, you know, one of the goals that we want, don't want to do is we don't want people to feel uncomfortable in their work environment or in their... <laughs> You know, because they don't want to put their job in jeopardy. So that they've got, they know some really great influential people, but sometimes people feel a little bit sensitive about speaking to those people. Still put them on the list, and we'll find a way when you feel comfortable to be able to speak to those people and when you feel like you've got some confidence in the business. The other thing I think is important to do as early as possible in the business is start to collect business cards. And it's quite interesting, you know, on a daily basis, in the amount of people you come into contact with. Quite interesting, I was just, uh, my, my wife and I have just recently got into mountain biking and standing in the shop the other day, got chatting to a guy and he was telling us where he cycles and a little what he does. And it was so easy to say, wow, that's really interesting. Um, do you have a business card or a number that I can get hold of you on? And definitely was not a time I didn't want to bring the business up, had no intention of doing anything like that. At this stage, it's just really a, a beginning point to just start to collect business cards in and around dealing people, uh, in, obviously people that you would may want to talk to at a later stage. Again, it just starts to add to your list and you keep expanding your list so that you have an endless supply of people that, that come along. And uh, you know, there's many, many great prospecting um, CDs. Often that you only really need to get into later. I've got uh, so many of the, of the better prospecting CDs, uh, more on prospecting, and it starts with a smile of the names of just two that, that come to mind. But, of course, it's just starting to expand your list and keep your list growing along the way. And the goal with you know, meeting people you know, at the end of the day, especially when you're new, is not, to, is not to go and show them the business. The goal is just to make a friend. 
And what I like about the business is it's taught me, who's typically an introverted person, just to be more friendly so that, that you know, if the business it's does happen to, to come up connected with somebody point. made a friend and then bring the business up at a later point. So my goal is not to go and get someone for the business. My goal is to make a friend. And I think if you keep that in mind, that you, all you're trying to do is be friendly, get out there, see if there's a common ground for you guys to even connect on. I mean, some people you connect with and some people you don't connect with. You know, the beautiful thing about the business is as your business gets bigger, you, you know, in the beginning you show the business to anyone, but as you get more successful in the business, you, you get to choose who you want to work with. And that's one of the things I like most about the business. So if you pro, you know, out there just sort of as said, casually meeting someone in a bike shop and you like the guy, maybe there'll be grounds to do business in the future, maybe they won't. But if you like the guy, be friends with the guy. Get to know the person. And maybe later there might be something, maybe they won't. But the goal is not to go and get people. The goal is to make friends. And once you've made a friend, once there's a connection, it's always easier to link into other things from then on. Yeah, and it's quite an interesting point is that um, when I first got started in this business uh, seven years ago, I showed this business to everybody I knew, and one of those people was my brother. And um, even though he wasn't interested at the time, we left the door open and said, if ever you'd like to chat it at a later stage, you're absolutely welcome. And the point I'm tr really trying to make is that, you know, it's always just keeping the door open on people, that if you talk to somebody sooner and it's not the right time for them, maybe you're going to add them onto your list at a later stage. Maybe you'll talk to them in six months' time, maybe two months' time. Maybe never. You, you decide, you know, their reaction and how you're feeling. But quite interesting is that I've been involved in the business now just over seven years, and my brother came to a business uh, preview this week. First time I could get him to anything seven years later. You know, our business has, you know, got teams in different parts of the world and, you know, pretty okay team in South Africa. And seven years later, he only finally turned up at a meeting because I never made him feel guilty about it. I never made him feel bad about it. I just treated him nicely and I kept the door open so that you can sometimes talk to some of those people at a later stage when it might be the right time for them. Absolutely. I had an experience recently where I showed a presentation to a guy uh, three years ago. And I haven't really, I have not spoken to him since then, but we did connect very well. You know, some people you just really, really connect with. And I had a, uh, you know, a, a call the other day from him saying, hey, listen, you know, you're still involved. I said, absolutely. He said, well, you know, I think I'm ready to have a look at that thing again. And he got together and he's got started and he's coming to this uh, seminar to, this weekend. So, you know, does it happen often? If you do right by people, you know, you know, one of the things that you just want to remember being really new in the business and starting to move your business forward is that, we want to leave people having, leaving our company with having a better experience and happier than when they didn't come into our company. <laughs> the reason that's really important is because things like this then will happen to you. If this has never happened to you, or this, you know, if you've been in the business for more than two years and this hasn't happened to you, you know, maybe you need to have a look at how you're leaving people when, you, when they aren't interested in the business. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's got a lot more to do with timing than anything else. We've all learned that. And timing is either right for people or it's wrong for people. And it's wrong for people. It doesn't matter how well you show the presentation, how slick, how smooth, how sophisticated you sound. If they ain't looking, they ain't looking. But if you leave the door open, they will remember you because they liked you. And when they, their circumstances change, and people's circumstances change on a daily basis, you know, they'll remember you and pick up the phone and give you a call. And isn't that a refreshing experience? Well, I think we're going to roll on to talking a little bit about the invitation, and uh, certainly the expert on the invitation, he knows the seven steps uh, really down, uh, down pat. He's uh, well prepared, and, um, and so we're going to roll on talking about the invitation. So yes. I think the thing with the invitation is that when you sit down to make those first few phone calls, you know, what, one of the things that I learned very early on in the business is I like to tackle the biggest fish as quickly as possible because once I've done that one, I can do the rest. Because once I get that yucky, ugly one out the way, the one you know, I just look at their name and I feel like being, you know, uh, passing out. Once I've done that one, the rest can only be easy. And it was surprisingly, what I've learned in the business is the the more successful people are, the more they see the value in the business, and the less successful are, they, the more they seem to find the hole in the business. And uh, that, for me, that's just you know, it's, it's just uh, the irony of life is that the people who need it are the ones who never see it. And the people you think don't need it are the ones that always see the value and will find time for it. So, you know, just in terms of those seven steps, you know, again, you want to be quite relaxed. Now, this, for me, this was one of the most difficult things to do because I was quite an introverted person when I started this business. And to pick up the phone for me was like picking up a 50-kilogram weight. Um, so the phone would ring three times. They didn't answer. I'd just put it down and go, yes. <laughs> and I used to feel so good about that they didn't answer the phone. And then when they did answer, I could hear 
how nervous I was because my voice was jumping so much. But the thing that really helped me a lot is that is to stick as close to the script that gives you. The closer you stick to the script. Now, let me explain something to you. As you can see, I've got no hair. It, it was really coming from getting the business to be right and to work for me. Because we take the system and we mold it to us. So, you know, what the, I always joke that the reason why I've lost all this hair is because it took me that long tearing my hair out to get the script right. Now, it's taken me, you know, years of experience and thousands and thousands of invitations to get the script right. If you want to go and interfere with it, I can't guarantee your results. If you stick to the script, what I can say is you're going to get the best possible results you're going to get. I think it's important when you, when you phone somebody. I mean, these are just really trying to set your posture. But I think it's pretty important to be thinking about what you're offering somebody. <laughs> and obviously, we can talk a little bit about experience of how we've been able to help change some people's lives as a result of building this business. But when you first get started, you, know, you almost feel like guilty phoning somebody. You almost feel like you're phoning them so that I can benefit and it really isn't when you really understand how this business works and when you really understand what's going to happen and the way your team is going to grow in the bigger picture of things, what you really realize is that you're offering somebody an opportunity and you're offering them an opportunity that could really drastically change their life. This business creates money and time and it creates options for people that certainly nothing can. And I can give multiple examples of people in our business that now no longer have to work and mothers that can now be full-time parents with their children. I can give example of a, a doctor and his wife who, you know, when they got started two years ago, he was full-time in medicine, so was his wife. And uh, she unfortunately had you know, minor illness. And uh, so 18 months, two years down the line, he, she no longer works. He only works a half day. He maintains a passion in medicine because it's what he loves, but he now sets it up at the time and around the time he does. So the point I'm trying to make is that getting started, it's so important if you can create a posture around, you know, you really are offering somebody a genuine opportunity that could really drastically change their life. And if it's not for them, it's no problem. You're going to treat them nicely and you're going to leave the door open, but you're offering them an opportunity. They're definitely not doing you a favor. Absolutely. And one of the hardest you know, lessons for the newest people to learn is that we are the buyer, not the seller. You know, too often in this business, people are going out there and doing this business like they're a salesperson. And if, you, if you're telling, you're selling. And if you're asking, you're buying. Does that make sense yes. to everybody? So one of the things that I've kind of learned is that you get more direction and more results when you ask the right questions than you do by just rattling off what you think you know about the business or what's, what you want to offer people. So when you get into your invitation, you know, often you're going to start with people that you feel comfortable with and you kind of know what they want in their life. And so that's something maybe you want to bring into your invitation is, hey, you know, you, you know uh, Roger, you, uh, you've been a triathlete for you know, 20 years and uh, hey, maybe you'd like to be able to do your sport because you love it, not because you have to do it. And maybe it would be great to be able to pursue your passion uh, without having to worry about your day job because I know your day job interferes with that. So I think I might have come across a way that maybe we can get you to be able to spend more time being a triathlete. How does that sound to you? You know, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just remembering what are you trying to do? I think the biggest thing in the business is that you, you, what I've learned about selling, if you like, it's not so much about selling. It's about, it's about finding a reason. And at the end of the day, with the people that you start with are usually the people that you feel comfortable and close to. So if you know that Roger's desperately unhappy in his job because he wants to be more of a triathlete, you know you're going to get an appointment because he wants a way to be able to do that. And so what you want to do is you want to create a need or find a need, and then this business is then the fill-up for that. So that's part of what the, the, you know, the, the thinking behind the invitation is, is that you know, make the phone call, you know, sort of edify the people that you're speaking to, but most importantly is go back to that need that you know that people are, are interested in. Because we're always looking for people who are looking for us, aren't we? And the people who looking for us are the people who aren't happy with where they are right now. So we, we want to keep an emphasis on why aren't they happy, and maybe we've got an answer for that. I agree. I mean, definitely personalizing uh, the, the invitation is the best way by far if you're in a position to be able to do that. If you know somebody and you know a reason why they'd want to look at this business, and that could really be many different things, you know. 
as an example, you phone Joe and Mary, and you know for a fact that Mary would like to spend more time with her children. Maybe you're phoning somebody you know that they're, you know, as Kevin said, interested in sport. Maybe you're phoning somebody that you know they've always been looking at opportunities. So it's a great way to say, you know, hey, Mike, I know that you've always been looking at, at different ventures to get ahead. Well, I think I've come across something, and, and you can roll into your invitation. So personalizing the invitation, I believe, is, is really important. And I also believe it's really important to personalize an invitation around a couple if they're a couple. Now, we're going to get into that in a bit more detail in a second. But we have like definitely found that, that if you know, somebody's married or seriously involved, the results are 100% magnified if you talk to both partners versus just one partner and, and not the other. So I believe it's really important to, in person, you know, personalizing your invitation, you know, I would be very much saying, you know, hey, Mike, you know, I really would like to chat to you and Mary, and the reason why is. So from the beginning of your invitation, you're already setting it up that you're going to be talking to husband and wife or partner immediately from the beginning so that you're setting it up the right way. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the, you know, there's a couple of golden rules that I say uh, that are really, really, really important when you're making invitations. And certainly one of them is to see husband and wife together. Now, for me, there was a little bit of a challenge because in the beginning, you know, I, I was searching for a right way to be able to get husband and wife together because, you know, for me, when, when I make that invitation, like Sean spoke about getting to, you know, I want to see you and Mary, you know, by the time that conversation is finished, he's forgotten that it was you and Mary and he's booked it in his time, but he hasn't remember to check with Mary. So, you know, one of the things that I think is really important is that, you know, that I'm working together with, like I say, often I say I'm working together with my fiance, um, and, you know, I would love her to meet you, and I would love to meet your partner. And that's how I always try and, you know, make sure that I get to see the two together. And it's one of the golden rules, because we all know that the man looks like the, like the decision maker, but we all know that he isn't. Um, <laughs> The man is the head, but the woman is the neck. So um, at the end of the day, what's really important is that you, we never know who the decision maker in the family is. But what we do know is one of them is. So see both so you know who it is. 85% 80 chance is going to be the woman. There are seven basics uh, to the invitation that I think that if you adhere to these basics, you're going to get the best result. And that is that, you know... We know from experience that there's two ways to build the business. There's slow, where you go and do a couple of one-on-ones, and there's fast, where you get to do group meetings. And obviously, we would like to do it fast, but if you would like to do it slow, we'll do it slow with you. So whatever, you know, the business is not about us, it's about you. The business is about catering this to your life and your desires and your goals in life. So we fit it to you. So if you want to do it slowly and go and see a couple of key people, hey, we're happy to go with you and see a couple of key people. If you want to do it fast, where we can fill a couple of living rooms and get it done real quickly, Hey, that's even better. So at the end of the day, you know, there's going to be variations on the actual invitation that will be specific to whether it's a one-on-one -on -one or whether it's a home meeting. But there are some basics. The first one is we always use the phone. And the reason why we always use the phone is because, well, the phone you're in control, aren't you? If you're in a one-to-one, face-to-face -to, -face to someone, they get you into a corner, they start throwing all sorts of questions and objections at you, and especially if you're new and you haven't had the time to learn everything yet or listen to all the CDs yet, then you get caught in a corner, and as soon as you are caught holding your tongue, then you lose before you start because people want to know that you know what you're talking about. So if you always use the phone, if you always use the phone, you're always in control because you can make any excuse. They can't see what's happening on the other side, can, you? can they? So number one, use the phone. Number two, keep the chit-chat to a real minimum. This is a business call. You know, a lot of people who are new in their business, they want to have a long conversation. And the problem with having a long conversation is if you are set on having a, to get your business off to a quick start and doing a home meeting, what we find is if you want to invite 20 people, it could take you four days if you chit-chat to everybody like you normally do. So what we found is give, keep the chit-chat to a minimum. Point number three is to give the reason for being brief. This is really important. Hey, can't talk for long. Dinner's on the table, supper's on the table, can't talk for long, one of the kids is screaming, can't talk for long, the cat's eating the dog, whatever it is. <laughs> give a reason for being brief, obviously give an honest and sincere reason. Can't talk for long, got a million things I still got to do today before, you know, go to bed for work tomorrow. So keep it brief. Point number four, clear the night. Okay, you want to make sure that you clear the night for, first before you start talking about what you want to talk about. So what are you doing on Wednesday? Now, we always like to have two choices. What are you doing on Wednesday? Busy. What about Thursday? If they say busy, you say, it oh, doesn't matter. I'll catch up with you another time. Okay, why that? Because we don't want to come across as needy or desperate. As soon as you're needy or desperate, you lose before you start again. So 
give them an alternative choice. Then obviously the invitation, which I'm sure Sean's got some beauties he's going to share with you in a minute. Confirm, so I'm looking forward to seeing you and Miranda on Thursday night and hang up. So it should be a one-minute call, maybe two minutes. So if you're going to get your business off to a fast start and you want to invite 20 people, it's a half an hour session. If you don't stick to the rules, you don't stick to the guidelines, you don't stick to the seven points, then it's going to be a huge drain and exhausting exercise. So you want to stick as close as you can to the seven points. And my advice to you is you're going to hear from some, some one-liners now, but read this for the first three or four um, calls you make, read the invitation verbatim. Read exactly what's written on the piece of paper. Remember all the hair loss? Okay, you don't want to look, have a hairstyle like me. So my advice to you is read the invitation, read it, read it, read it, read it. If you haven't got it, read it. Read it, read it, read it, read it. And when you've got it done four times, you'll be able to feel comfortable with maybe switching it around a little bit, but you'll feel like you've got it. And you'll be, you've got it within the way we know we're going to get results for you, not in the way that you think. Okay, and you're I'm going to run through a real basic results. generic invitation. And you know, I'm not suggesting at all that you use this invita invitation. I definitely think it's better that you use the invitation that your line of sponsorship is advising. But I'm just going to give you a real you know, basic scenario of a, of a real basic invitation. You'd uh, phone somebody. Maybe you're dialing a really good friend of yours, uh, Mike and Mary. So you, you phone him up and uh, you know, hopefully Mike answers if, you, if you're phoning him and he says, uh, you go, hi, Mike, how are you doing? Um, great to, you know, great. And uh, just wanted to, uh, you know, how you and, you know, how you and the kids doing and how's work? And so keep it to a, you know, keep it, keep it pretty short. And then I said, look, Mike, I'd like to be brief. Uh, I can't chat long right now. Uh, we're going to be going out a little bit uh, later. But the reason um, that, I, that I really wanted to talk to you is, is from a business point of view. Are you free on Tuesday or Thursday night next week? And you then get an answer. And, uh, you know, obviously the, he answers says, yeah, no, I'm free on Tuesday night. And I say, okay, great. Look, the reason why is that, you know, Miranda and I are starting a new venture that we're getting off the ground. And it's a new project that, uh, and we're looking for somebody else to work with us. And obviously I thought of chatting with you and Mary. I know that Mary would be really keen to spend more time with the kids and, uh, and be able to, you know, have more time away from work. And that's really why we're talking is, is, is we'd like to chat with you is to get this new venture off the ground. Now, um, what I'd like to do is possible is pop around um, on, on Tuesday, 7.30, and just maybe have a coffee with you and run into a little bit of detail. Now, that's a real basic kind of invitation. He says, okay, fine. You then say, okay, great, Mike. Have you got a pen and paper? Can you write it down? You know, is that definitely confirmed? Fantastic. If anything goes wrong, you know, please give me a call and uh, let me know. Otherwise, then I'll see you then. Great. Okay, cheers, Mike. Got a dash. Bye. Now, that's a real basic invitation. Definitely not something that I'm saying you should use, but I'm just giving you a real basic idea of getting into a basic invitation to start to get, uh, you know, to start to get it rolling, kind of following those, those seven steps. Okay, well, that's a great way to get a, a one-on-one invitation. Maybe you can give us a nice generic example of how you get someone to come to a home meeting. Okay, so if, you, if I was going to phone somebody to invite them into a home meeting, um, you phone your friend Mike and Mary, and uh, Mike answers the phone. So, you know, I'd maybe go, hi, Mike, how are you doing? And say, yeah, it's fine. I say, great. You know, how are the kids? How you, you know, how's it work? Okay, Mike, I need to be brief. The reason why is that uh, we, we're going out in a, in a you know, couple of minutes' time. we got going out somewhere this evening. Quick question, Mike. What are you doing next week on either Tuesday or Thursday night? Are you free either Tuesday or Thursday? So he said, yeah, no, I'm free on Tuesday. I say, great. Reason calling, setting up a new business venture. It's a project that we're getting off the ground, and I wanted to have a chat to you and Mary. The reason I wanted to chat to you and Mary is that I know that Mary would like to have more time with the kids, and certainly I believe that, that we could help do that. What I'd like to do is, if possible, I'd love you to pop around to you know, our house Tuesday night about half past seven. I'm working alongside a gentleman by the name of Kevin Harris. Uh, he's a, a background is he's an architect, but on top of that, building some successful business systems. And we just got a unique opportunity for him to be sitting here. And I really believe it would be great for you and Mary to sit in with us. Will Tuesday work for you? He answers yes, because he already said that Tuesday was fine. And I said, fantastic. Um, look, if anything comes up, you need to please let me know at least two days in advance. And uh, there is going to be a couple other people sitting in with us because Kevin's time is limited. This guy is successful in business, and we're definitely just lucky to have an opportunity to have him with us on Tuesday. Great. Have you got that written down, Mark? Definitely Tuesday, half past seven. Fantastic. Look forward to seeing you there. Have a good evening. Bye. Okay. The, the real, you know, why do we do a curiosity approach? 
It's really simple, and, and the main reason why is in absolutely no way ever to be misleading to people, ever, okay? Everything that we do needs to be honest, and it needs to be, you know, to the point of what we believe this business is about. And the reason why we use a curiosity approach is, is that most people have got no concept at all about what our business is really about. They, most people have a complete preconceived idea as to what they, they think networking is. Now, when you really analyze and you look at the industry of networking, there have, to be honest, been some really shaky things that have been around over the time. You're doing. So first people all, might think that it's some kind of a scam, some other thing that's been around. Well, that's definitely not what our business is. The other side to it is that they might get completely the wrong idea and have a complete preconceived idea of what we're actually about when that's not really what our business is about. And I'm sure as you've seen, if you're already in the business and we're already now talking about the invitation, you've already, fast, you've already seen a presentation and you could already fast realize that to try and explain that over the telephone would be absolutely possible to get into any kind of detail over the phone. So in no way is our intention to be vague. Our complete intention is to be able to set up an appointment with somebody so that we can give them a fair view, overlook of what our business is about. And at the end of them seeing that, they can then decide for themselves that this is something worth pursuing or not something for them pursuing. And again, just reiterating, it's really important that we never misleading with people. I think that it's important that your, your, your invitation should never ever you know, be contrary to what you really want to talk about. I believe it's wrong to invite somebody to come around for a party or a dinner party and then you want to show them the business. I think if that, that's going to happen and, and maybe at the end of you know, them showing the business you're going to have a, a bit of a party, it's fine to say, look, we'd like to have a party, but I want to talk business with you first. I think it's really important that, that it's not misleading. I think it's important that you don't create some kind of a pretense of what this business might be when it's actually something completely different. And on those kind of lines, you know, um, people I know have been invited to a wealth seminar, and it's actually to see what this business is about. And this business is not a wealth seminar. It's an opportunity, and, uh, but it's not a wealth seminar. Uh, because a wealth seminar implies that you go and learn basically you know, how to do very little by and getting wealth coming back to you. And this is not. This is a business that's something that you're definitely going to need to put a little bit of effort into to build. So I think it's very important not to be misleading. I don't know if you've got any input on that. Absolutely. I think, you know, one of the, you know, I'm sure Sean will, will back me up on this and saying that, you know, of the people that we know that we show the presentation to who've had an exposure to the business before, unfortunately the exposure they've had before is not the exposure that we've just given them. And that's why we find, I'm sure Sean will relate to this, that in an overwhelming number of cases of people who've seen the business before and then see it from you, the way we do things as professionally and, and, and uh, you know, uh, with Correctly. Correctly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Professionally and correctly, the, the way we do things, people who've had exposure before and haven't had exposure from us say, hey, this wasn't what I've seen before. This looks really different. You know, it makes a lot more sense. Love to get involved. And unfortunately, when you're speaking to people, we don't know what sort of exposure they've had. Like if someone had been invited to a bride, like we spoke about, and then someone just hurled a presentation at them, they're going to have a bad experience from this business. But they had a bad experience not because the business was bad, but because the person who invited them didn't do things right. And so we are in, in, constant, in life on a constant mission to try and do things correctly. Why are we trying to do things correctly? So we don't want to muddy the water for everybody else. You know, we, want to, we, we believe we have the best business opportunity in the world, and we want to be, be able to present this to every, If everybody could see the business the way that you guys have seen the business, everyone would be involved in the business. But unfortunately, we don't send you on a six-month training program before we release you on the world. And so people get out there and start talking about this business before they really know about this business. And that's where all the, the challenges come down the line, and that's what makes our job a little bit more difficult. And that's why we try to be a little bit more sophisticated with our approach, so that we give people the best opportunity to stay open-minded as long as possible, to see the value in what we've got, and not make preconceived ideas about some experience that someone may have had or someone that they know may have had, which isn't what we do. Let's say you've just done an invitation to somebody and uh, you, you, you invited them to come along on Tuesday and they ask you the question, well, what is it? And there's multiple different answers and uh, certainly um, I'd like to see one or two of, or hear one or two of, but sometimes, you know, some of the basic things I say is, I say to somebody, well, we need to get, to sitting together on Tuesday would probably take us about 45 minutes to go through everything. So if we did it on the phone now, it would probably take about an hour and a half. Would you mind if we kept it for Tuesday because I just don't have that kind of time right now? Would that be okay with you? That's an answer you could give. Nothing wrong with that. And, uh, and certainly uh, uh, straight to the point. Yeah. You know, you know, again, the idea is not to be misleading. You know, but you want people to try and stay open-minded as long as possible. So you know, 
if I'm inviting to someone at a presentation that Sean's doing and they ask me, well, I like, I like to have an answer that is generic that you can answer for any question they could ask or any objection they may have. So I like to use this one. It doesn't, you know, you, you just check with the guy that's working or the people that are working with you before you give this answer. But I like to say, look, there's so many different parts to what that's going to speak about that might appeal to you. I'm not sure what's going to. Come along, have a listen, meet the kind of people that we're working with. Why? Because Let's see how we go I from do there. believe there's Come so many different paths to the business. I've got people in this business who love artistry and just retail. I've got people in the business who love eSpring and just do that. Or Dove Neutral Art and just do that. Or people who are just consumers and occasionally send a referral through. And there's some people who want to be really active in the business and build networks. So within the, the scope of what we do, there are so many different paths to what we do that might appeal to somebody. By trying to answer that on the phone, I don't believe you're doing justice to those people because, again, you may be leading them in a direction that you may want them to go, which is obviously to be an independent business owner. But they're not interested in that. They just want to be able to use the artistry and refer it to their friends. And so I, I say there's, there's some different aspects to what it speaks about. I'm not sure what's going to appeal to you. Come along, have a listen, meet some of the people. We'll have a cup of coffee afterwards and see what appeals to you. I think the main point from what Ms. just said there is that to try and do any kind of a detailed answer is absolutely impossible. Now, I can tell you, of course, I was advised when I got started not to try and answer people and explain what this business is about over the phone because it doesn't work. And I definitely tried it, as I'm sure most people do. And uh, definitely uh, it doesn't work. I can't think of one time when I've explained what this business is about over the phone that people have actually got any kind of a fair idea and been interested to want to know what it's about. There's always somehow a preconceived idea that jumps in and it doesn't really make, make sense at all along the way. Well, if somebody asked me, is it Amway? Well, there's, uh, there's, many, there's a couple different ways you could answer that, of course. And, um, you know, the, the, the one real answer is, it's certainly probably the answer I use most of the times, I'd say absolutely um, Amway is a part of what we're going to be talking about. If you don't mind me asking, you know, the, what do you know about Amway? And the reason I want to ask you, the reason I, and I say this, and the reason I'm asking you is because what we're doing has evolved and changed drastically in the last little while, and I'd like to make sure that we're talking about the same thing. So what is it that you know about Amway? And they would then roll on, and they'd go into some kind of a, a thing about, oh, you know, I was invited to a barbecue or a bry, and this person, you know, w you know, all of a sudden jumped out with a whiteboard and, you know... <laughs> And, and, and most often than not, when you hear people's experiences, you know, you need, this is what I find really works really well. I say, you know what? If I had that sort of experience that you'd have, I'd feel exactly like you feel. But let me tell you what my experience has been. And I talk about what my experience has been. And the reason why I do that is because, again, most people, 85% of people's exposure isn't the exposure that we give them. If it was, they'd be in, in my opinion, or have a really good impression of the business. And unfortunately, as we said before, people don't always give a good impression because we don't spend enough time. Like, if you joined a company, you know, they're going to put you on six weeks training minimum before they release you. Here, we don't put you on six weeks training before we release you. We'd like to, but we don't have the time or the resources to do that. So the way that we handle it is, is it's almost a carbon copy. It's saying, you know, absolutely, Amway is one of the companies we deal with. We deal with many others. Have you heard of... And I'll rattle off a few others, Vodacom, Netflorist, Glen Rand, um, you know, uh, and we're growing all the time. But what we really focus on is, is working with entrepreneurs and helping them find a way to be able to achieve the things in life that they are really wanting to achieve. But I don't know if you can relate to this, but I would say I was an architect. You know, you get so focused on being an architect and you never stop to ask yourself, is, do I like the way that architects live? And if you stop to ask yourself the way do I, I like the way architects live, would I still have chosen to become an architect? And for most art people, the answer is no. So what I found is everybody wants to diversify and needs to create more, but for most people it's a question of money and time. And so we put teams of people together to work together on a project so we can get the same results as owning something else of your own, but we leverage off one another. And so there's so much more to what I could possibly show you or explain to you over the telephone. But, you know, just being around some of the people that we work with and having exposure to some of the systems we set up, I, th I believe will be one of the best experiences you've ever had. So, you know, come along on Tuesday and meet some of the people. Well, I mean, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the kind of answer I use is very similar to Kevin's. Yes, absolutely. Amway is part of this. What do you know about it and what has been your experience? They then give you some kind of an experience. Agree with people, never argue, hear them out. And at the end of that, I like to use what Bubba Pratt uses and the, the example he uses, which comes out of a CD, Three Steps to Handling Objections, where you basically say, I understand. 
can I make a suggestion? Tuesday night we're going to be running through you know, the, this, this quick talk with me anyway. Why don't you pop along and come and have a listen? Because what you're going to see is very different to what your experience is before. Now, please, if it's not for you on Tuesday, at the end say no. But then at least you know exactly what it is that you're saying no to and that you don't find out later what we're doing is different. Because what you're talking about is old-fashioned networking, which had an adding effect and it only worked for a very few minority of results. But I can't explain it on the phone in enough detail. All I can tell you is if you'd trust me to give me an hour of your time on Tuesday, pop along, come and have a listen. I'm quite sure that you'd be impressed. And again, I reiterate, if it's not for you, please say no. But at least you then you know exactly what it is you're saying no to. Absolutely brilliant. You know, I think one of the th things that, from a new person's perspective, you know, when you listen to the way that handles the objection or the way that I handle the objection, it, obviously it sounds very polished. You know, obviously we've dealt with thousands and thousands of objections. But at the end of the day, what you need to know is that in the heart of everybody who really sees this business properly, you've got someone who's saying, I really, 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 really want to believe this is true. Please convince me. And if you remember that, and you just remember, don't get caught so uh, in a fluster when you're getting these objections that you start misrepresenting. And that's what I find a lot of people do misrepresent. So if that, get people ask the question, is it Amway? A lot of people say no. And that just, it's not because they, they really want to say no, it's just because it's easier to say no than what's said, isn't it? <laughs> you just have to just remember to be calm and just say, and just remember this, that everybody who, who sees this and understands this properly, you know, they really, really, really would love to believe this is true because everybody, everybody in the world I know would love the options that this business provides. Everybody. And our job is to make sure that we present it in the best possible way that they make the, the most amount of information, the best amount of information to make the most educated decision. So our job on the phone is to just understand where people are at, to meet them where they're at, and to, you know, massage them and make them feel good about coming and that they're not going to be roped into anything. And we're going to show some ideas, and if they like what they see, great, we'll take it further. And if they don't like what they see, hey, at least they leave there understanding things a bit better. Rolling on to the next thing is that uh, I'd love to hear from you. You know, if you invite somebody to come along on Tuesday night and uh, you confirm them on Tuesday, maybe you're going to send an SMS, maybe you're going to give a call, check upline with your upline, what they suggest is the best way and what they're suggesting and what's working for them. But let's say the person cancels on the night. What are you going to do then, and what would be the next step that you would roll forward on? Okay, well, obviously, you know, uh, this is a, where, an area where I find a lot of people sort of drop the ball because they invite people once and they don't come. So, you know, you know different groups are to handle things differently, but kind of the way I sort of feel that we need to handle it is I hate to chase people. As soon as I feel like I've phoned more than twice, I feel like I'm chasing. And as soon as you're chasing, I think you're losing before you're starting because you're coming across again as desperate and needy and you don't want to be coming across as desperate and needy because we don't need anyone in this business. We're looking for people are looking for us, aren't we? So one of the things I do is, you know, you, you, you get a list. Of, if, if it was a home meeting, you got a list of the people that were supposed to come that didn't come, and you give them a call the next day. They say, hey, okay, I'm so glad you couldn't make it last night. There were so many people here I wouldn't have had a seat for you anyway. Because <laughs> if you've done the invitation right and you've listened to the instructions and you've sat down with the person and done exactly what the system lays out for you, you will definitely find that you get a house that's full of people and there won't be enough seats for everybody, which is what our goal is because that creates excitement, doesn't it? So find them the next day and say, hey, I'm so glad you couldn't make it last night because there wouldn't have been a seat for you anyway. But there were some amazing concepts that came across last night. Um, and there's some things I'd like to really share with you because I'd like to have your opinion on it. Um, you know, when can we... In, uh what I find I do then is exactly that, is if somebody doesn't come to the home meeting, you know, maybe you'd invite them to a second meeting. But quite often, you know, I find then I roll on to a one-on-one. -on -one. Now, maybe you invite them to two meetings and they cancel a second time, or you invite them on to a one-on-one -on -one and they cancel a second time. I find after that then I really like to be honest with people, and I personally like to talk very straight. I'm definitely not going to phone people back 17 times and chase them around the countryside. So what, I'd like, what I typically would say to somebody, I'd say, you know, hey, Mike, I understand you were tied up the other night, and now this is after they've already cancelled twice. So I say, this is now the third time I'm phoning. I say, Mike, I understand that you were tied up the other night and um, really I need to move forward on this project right now yeah, are you open you know that you and Mary and, and you know that we can have a coffee this week or is it going to be impossible because if it can't work for this week then unfortunately I'm going to need to move on and and, uh, and you know it really might not be something for you then and so I just leave a little bit of the door open that if they don't want to talk about it oh no no I'm too busy this week I can't well that's fine but I've basically given them a parameter I've said look we need to meet this week and if not this week I need to move on so that I've created 
parameter so that I'm not going to be chasing them and they know that I'm not going to be chasing them and that there's a line to be drawn in the sand and there you go, we're either meeting this week or unfortunately they're going to miss out. Yeah, I kind of hope that that's kind of helped you. That's trying to keep it as simple, as basic as possible for the new people to get their list going, to get some basics on the invitation going and to handle some basic objections. But obviously there's a, a, a huge amount of materials and, uh, available on the list and how to invite people and how to handle objections. And we would suggest that you would get some more of that material if you want to you know, learn this properly and to hear the experience of people who've got, had a lot more experience than I put together. Um, so you know, there's, there's a lot of material out there and um, it's going to prepare you for success in this business. What I think would be great to hear from is uh, what, how you were on a phone session and what a phone session is about. And then maybe I'll talk a little after that on conference calling and how conference calling really works. Great. Okay, so the way that we uh, run a phone session is obviously uh, once you've signed people up and you want to get them started, you sort of give them the goal to come and meet the team. And a, a great way to meet the team is that we get together once a week on a Sunday night or a Monday night to be able to sit down. You get to see the people that we're working with. You get to hear how these guys start to speak to people, to invite them to presentations. And most importantly, you also get to meet the people that are going to be people who are going to be working with, who are putting people into your business for you. So you want to be, you meet these people, see if you like them, that, that, that the fit fits for you. Uh, and most important, you want to be around the people who have got a little bit more experience than you so that you learn um, from what they've done. So this phone session is a really important meeting because everyone gets together in the lines. You get to, again, as we said, meet the people. But most importantly, what people want to be and what you want to make sure is that the newest people are around people who've got a little bit more experience so that they can see how they handle the no's. You know, one of the most important things about being in a phone session is, is seeing that everybody that's there, everyone that I know is not, is not excited about getting no. It's really important that you see that because, you know, when I was first new in the business, I was quite introverted and, you know, I didn't have the confidence that, that this business has helped me develop today. So for me, it was really important to be able to see how people who've been around it for a while handle that. And when you see that it, 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 they don't take it personally and they don't, it doesn't you know, interfere with their, their whole psyche, then it's a nice, you feel more confident about getting the nose and being around people who can support you. So why the phone session is really good is you get to be around that. You're going to get time to focus with someone who will probably sit down with you as a new person to look at your list and sit down and do some focus calls with you. But you'll be able to go around and listen to the, some of the other people make the invitations and see what the way that they do things. And for those people that are very, really competitive, you know, one of the things we do is we put up a, a board with hit, miss, flush. Hit being you got the appointment, miss mean you missed the person, they weren't available, and flush means... You said no. They said no, yeah. <laughs> See, I can't even say it. <laughs> Everybody says yes all the time, don't they? That's right, absolutely. So, and, and then what I like about that hit, miss, flush thing is that uh, it also gets me to see who the people that are really competitive are. Because, you, you know, you're also looking for people that sometimes are competitive. Um, and it's just, you know, you, it's a really positive environment to be in. It gives you the confidence to make the calls. And uh, that energy and that synergy of the team is just a powerful, powerful thing. You'll feel so much more confident about the decision you made to get involved in the business when you get to see the people that are there as well. And uh, it'll be just a great experience. And I can just think of a, one lady in, in, uh, that I heard the story of just this last week who went along to a phone session. She's in a team that uh, I'm personally building. I, I wasn't, unfortunately, at that phone session. But one of the uplines sat down with her and said, come on, we need to make your first couple of calls. Now's the time to give it a go, and I'm here to help you. And she was really nervous to make her first phone call and uh, really, you know, should I or shouldn't I? You know, and, you know, anyway, they got out and wrote out a couple names and had the numbers there, dialed the first person. Of course, the upline did all the talking on her first phone call because she was very nervous to help her and set the appointment. And it's amazing. Like, immediately, her posture changed. All of a sudden, like, there's a whole lot more names. Oh, let's phone this person, and why don't we do this, and why don't we do that? And it's just so funny. What's great about a phone session is you just start to see it working for other people, and all of a sudden, you're excited about making a call and excited about getting your name on the board, and I've got a hit, or I've got some appointments set, and there you go. And it's just what's great about it is it gives people the confidence to, to really, you know, make some calls and, and get it rolling along. So, Definitely suggest, if possible, you know, if your team's doing a phone session, to pop along to one and really go and, uh, and learn from some guys on the team and let an upline help you with a call or two, if possible, if you feel like you need it initially until you're rolling along. Absolutely. I think, again, the thing with the business is one of the greatest things that I've learned is that the business is about belief. If you believed like she believes, you'd phone, you know, key tomorrow, invite them to a presentation. 
because he needs the business too. So again, everybody wants to believe. Everybody wants to believe. What are they thinking inside? I really, really, really want to believe this is true. I really, really want to believe I can do it. Okay? A lot of people don't believe that they can do it. And so when they're in the environment and they see the people handling the nose and they see the rejection being handled in such yes, a, a being around a the people, way, and so, hey, it's, it's a great environment to be able to do that. Well, what I'd like to talk a little bit about is conference calling. Sometimes it's impossible for somebody to make a phone session, and maybe you're working with them and you'd like to start to make the, the first appointments with them and maybe to go out and do some one-on-ones or even invite people to a home meeting. And what I find is great about conference calling is that you're able to control the process and you're able to help somebody to start to get results. So if you're brand new and you're getting started and Upline uses conference calling and it works for them, it's a great tool. So what's going to happen is the, your Upline is going to phone you, get you on the line, you're going to chit-chat, and he'll probably prepare you and go through what's going to happen. But if I can just roll straight into it, what will basically happen is that your Upline would put you on hold and then they would dial your prospect so I'm going to answer the phone, and if I answer the phone, I would then go, Hi, I'm calling. Um, you don't know me. I know you through uh, from work. Um, can you speak now? Is it a good time? And he says, yes. And I say, great. I've got on, on the line right now. We want to talk to you together from a business point of view. I'm just going to click on so that we can both chat if that's okay. And immediately I click on the line, and now clicks on the line. So as she clicks on, I say, hey, you can say hello to a really difficult job to do in this whole process. She's got to go, Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? And uh, he'll say, yeah, fine. I say, reason Sean and I are both on the line is that he wants to talk uh, about a new business project that we're getting off the ground. And I go, yeah, that's exactly it. Reason calling, Sean and I are setting up a new venture. We're getting off the ground. And, and then I roll into an invitation. And, uh, you know, we, we're just getting together with a couple of people. We're running through a, a, a quick, you know, PowerPoint or whatever it might be. You know, are you free on, on either Tuesday or Thursday next week? Great, you're free on Tuesday. Super, you know, is it possible that you come along and sit in with us? Uh, we'll be about 45 minutes an hour, and we'll obviously get into a bit of detail. Now, of course, any questions it might be brand new. She doesn't know how to answer it, how to go about it. I'm on the line. So, of course, the question, well, what is it about? Or, you know, what about this? Or what about that? I can answer the question professionally, correctly, in the right way and learn from me from what I say and she's learning the process. If maybe we can't make that meeting, we can immediately book a one-on-one -on -one, and straight away she's got her diary in front of her, I've got my diary in front of me and so we can align times. I hate it when somebody goes to set appointments and they go in their phone and then they set a time and then I can't fit in and then they phone back and then he can't fit in and then they set up another time and it doesn't work for Great thing about conference calling is upfront knows when he's coming to the meeting. I'm going to be at the meeting as well as there's going to be a, you know, I'm, he, she's got a, a business partner that's going to be there with her. We've set it up professionally. It's set up at a time that works for both of us. So if conference calling works for you and your line of sponsorship, it's a great tool. I hope that's kind of explained how it works. And it certainly might, uh, you know, might be something a great tool for your upline to help you to get appointments set up and rolling forward. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to handle two objections. You know, let's say somebody um, says to you, you make an appointment and they say, this has got anything to do with any kind of networking. My answer is definitely no. Two ways you could go. I mean, one thing you need to know is you're never looking for everybody in this business. Treat people nice, treat them respectfully, always try and leave the door open. But if it's not the right time for somebody or somebody's closed, doesn't matter, move on. I mean, you definitely don't need any one person to build a successful business. Basically, you're going to have multiple people in, in multiple teams that, that grow big businesses. So I don't need any one person. So that's the first thing to remember. So what I, but I, what I would do is if somebody says, if it's got anything to do with networking, I'm not interested, I'd say, well, what I'm going to show you has evolved of what was a networking structure, but it's evolved now into something quite different. But you know, before you know, we even chat any further, if you don't mind me asking, why exactly are you so negative to looking at anything that's got to do with networking? And then I'm going to listen, and I'm going to agree with them, and I'm going to say, really, and why, and, and, and what you saw, and understand it. Just agree and listen. And then what I would maybe do is I'd roll into what I spoke about earlier. As I'd say, look, I understand. Can I make a suggestion? Tuesday night, why don't I just have a quick coffee with you? Or Tuesday night, why don't you sit in with me? Now, you know, if you, after you and Mary have sat in with me, if this is not for you, please say no. But at least then you know what you're saying no to. Because what we were talking about is old-fashioned networking, which really had an adding effect. What we're involved in now creates a multiplication effect. And I really believe you're going to see something that's very different. But if it's not for you on Tuesday, say no. But then at least you know exactly what it is you're saying no to. And uh, you've given it a fair, fair listen to. And I respect that. And you, know, you respect me. And I think that's a pretty fair thing yeah. to do. Yeah, I would... I would handle it in a very similar way. I mean, I would just, 
you know, Sean's a little smoother than me. I would say, you know, I would just answer straight out. I'd say, wow, yeah. gee, it sounds like you've had a really, really bad And then experience. I say, back into that same thing again. You know, you know, if I'd had that same experience, I would feel exactly like you feel. But you don't know me and I don't know you. All I can say to you is what my experience has been is completely different to you. Can I make a suggestion to you? Why don't we meet for a cup of coffee for 10 minutes? Let me throw a couple of ideas on the table. If you think it's worthwhile pursuing after 10 minutes, let's take it further. If not, we won't waste any more of each other's time. But I think you could be giving up on something that could be absolutely brilliant. You know, on the same point, you know, what if somebody says at the end of the, the end, you know, after you've invited them, um, I'm not happy to come along. I'd like you to send me something on email. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, very simply what I would do is I'd answer that with a little bit of posture. I really would. And I, you know, my answer to somebody would be something like, you know, Mike, I'm setting up a serious venture here. And if I was going to be giving my time up to spend an hour with you, obviously my hour needs to be spent wisely. And I wouldn't be wanting to send you an email if I knew that an email would give you a perspective of what we're talking about. We need to meet for an hour so we can get into some details so you can get a fair overview. Now, please, after we meet, if it's not for you, say no. But at least then you know what you're saying no to. But it really is going to take an hour. Are you happy for us to meet for an hour, or would you rather we just scrap it and, and take it no further? What would you do, Kevin? <laughs> yeah, I would do that. I think you're quite kind. I, I usually find people like that. They, I, I, it drives me nuts when the people try to posture themselves over you. So, you know, you, you've got to, th this is an art to be able to then reposture yourself over on top of that. And just remember, you're the buyer, not the seller. You know, you, if you, hey, it sounds to me like uh, you're too busy to look at opportunity. Um, you know, I'm pretty much moving pretty fast ahead and I don't really have time to sit and put down an email. And I couldn't on an email do justice to what I'm, I'm busy working on. You know, um, if you want to meet, great, I'd love to meet you. If you don't want to meet, hey, let's, let's just leave it at that. And, it's, and again, you've got to, it's, it's, it's not easy to posture yourself. So what you do is you pretend that it's your, someone in your family that you can posture yourself with and pretend it's them saying it. And that makes it a lot easier because, like, you know, the way you posture yourself with your parents or you posture yourself with your siblings or your wife or your husband, you know, it's, it's well, maybe not that bad, but... <laughs> <laughs> So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, remember again, you're the buyer, not the seller. So you're not begging anyone to get in the business. You're looking for the ones who're looking for you. Hey, if they're not looking, there's a million people you can find. Well, I think we've got through a lot today, and just really would like to thank Kevin as well for his time. And, and I'd like to together. thank Sean for his time. <laughs>